My name is Anwar and I'm very happy to be here with you today. I have a lot of cool stories to share with you, but today I thought we needed something truly exciting, something that would make you think. Because in the end of the day, you all came here to learn some new ideas. And I think one of the coolest ideas for you to learn today would be some new stuff about your hidden superpower, which is your brain. Well, it's your superpower, also it is mine. And today, in order to present my message, we will have to break a few rules. First of all, uh, usually, well, probably you heard it today, you were not allowed to use your cell phone because it's not nice. For my presentation later on, I will ask you to use your cell phone. Does everybody have a cell phone? Yes? Lovely. Later on, I will ask you to use your cell phone. That's one. And uh, the second rule that we're going to break today, it's a bit more hardcore. Uh, we will try to change or we'll try to turn the way of evolution. It sounds scary, but you'll see that you can do it and everybody can do it to a certain extent, but not get too scared. It's fine. Everybody can do it. And although we started speaking about the brain and it sounds very scientific, our story today doesn't start in a lab or in a classroom. When I was growing up, I was a rebellious child. Uh, I liked to challenge my own physical and mental limits. And unfortunately, or fortunately for other people, I like to challenge the limits of the people around me. For example, when I was 9 or 10, uh, I gathered a group of 10 kids. I was the leader and I said, look guys, we don't need civilization. We're going to get a knife, matches, a bag of boiled potatoes, and we're going to venture to the mountains and live in the mountains. Everybody thought it's a cool idea, so we went to the mountains. The, in the mountains we spent, I think, four or five hours. The potatoes finished very quickly. We couldn't start the fire. We didn't know what to do with a knife, so everybody came back to the houses. But inside I really liked this venturing part, this breaking the rules. So the best way to break the rules for a child or the best way to experience, the best, uh, the best way for a child to challenge himself is sport. So from the age of four, I started swimming, then I did track and field, basketball, volleyball, chess, any sport that you could think of. And it happened that I loved sports, but everything changed in 2009. It was here in Cyprus when my friend said, look, Anwar, everything you did before, it's not cool. There is this new sport which you can do. You can do the sport. You have to perform physical activities, but you shouldn't breathe. And I thought, wait, this doesn't make any sense. If you do sports, the body needs oxygen. You get your oxygen from the air that you breathe. So it just doesn't make any sense. But my friend said, look, don't worry, it's gonna be fine, give it a try. So this is how I came into free diving. Yes, just a, little, just a little presentation so that at least you know how it looks like. Basically, the sport of freediving is uh, it relies on the athlete's ability to hold their breath and perform difficult, different physical activities without the use of breathing apparatus. To put it in layman's terms, you inhale, you dive down, you spend some time on under the water, and then you come back up. The easiest way for me to explain freediving to you guys is to show it to you. And this is what we're going to do right now. Can you just get your phones out, please? Everybody. Okay, unlock the phones and go to the stopwatch. We want to see the stopwatch or it's in the clock settings. Stopwatch is ready. Lovely. Right now, you're going to experience freediving yourself. You're going to relax. Take a full inhale and just hold your breath. And let's see what your body will tell you. I'm pretty sure I know what it will, but I just want you to experience what will go through your mind. 
So if everybody's ready, is everybody ready? Can you just nod so I know? Okay. Full inhale and hold. Okay, no cheating. First, you will not really feel that you're holding your breath. You can look at the time. Maybe you can look at me, but uh, don't cheat. Okay. Try, try not to hold too much, but just experience what the body goes through. How does it feel? Did anybody stop yet? Mm -hmm. Good. A very free diving audience. Okay. Okay. Who can hold more? Can you just raise hands? Is anybody holding? Okay, let's just wait for another 20 seconds. Okay, lovely. Exhale. Thank you very much. What you've just experienced is called apnea. In Greek, apnea means holding your breath. How did it feel? Did it feel weird? First, I think it was pleasant, but then the mind started saying, wait, this just doesn't feel right. I need to move. I need to wiggle my feet. I need to swallow. It's perfectly fine. This is the way you, your body tells you that you need to breathe and you do need to breathe. It's the way evolution programmed you and it's perfectly fine. Everybody do that. Everybody does it. I'm 28. I've been breathing all my life, just like you guys. Uh, but this time, well, our speech is the power is about the power of the brain. And I believe that free diving or holding your breath is uh, all about here. It's all about the brain. What we're going to do now is a bit different. We're going to try the second time, but this time you will feel that it will, it will be actually much more comfortable and much easier. I'm not going to do anything physical to you, so don't worry. But I'm going to ask you to please just follow a few simple suggestions that I will give you. First of all, I know those chairs are not the most comfortable you could think of, but make sure you sit comfortably. So, may, yes, maybe you can sit comfortably. You feel that you're, like, you're feeling like you're going to fall asleep, but you're not going to fall asleep. Please don't. Second thing that I would want you to do once you feel comfortable, I want you to just understand that whether all your muscles are relaxed. Are your toes relaxed? Wiggle them. Imagine there is this relaxation wave going slowly higher and higher towards your head. All the muscles relaxed, you feel a bit sleepy. Okay, the second thing that I would want you to do, please breathe slowly. I want you to breathe very slowly and very, not uh, very big inhales, but I want you to pay attention to how slow you breathe. So it could be an inhale and very slow exhale. Once you start to breathe slowly, please sit comfortably. One thing I want you to do in the very end is once you hold your breath, I would want you to close your eyes. This thing is very important. I, I promise nobody's going to take your bag or nobody's going to do something weird. Just please, when, once you hold your breath, close your eyes. You're going to hear some sounds. It will be the sound of the rainforest. And just imagine the rainforest in your mind. If my eyes were closed, I would picture some trees and some green flowers and the fog coming from the floor. Maybe a bird soared somewhere in the sky. I want you to imagine all those details. Maybe you're going to imagine the moist on your skin or this uh, feeling on your lips. Maybe it's going to have a smell. How does the rainforest smell? I have no idea. I've never been to one. But imagine you know how it feels. Imagine you are there. Is everybody fine with it? OK, lovely. So now, slow breathing, comfortable body position, full inhale. And just imagine you're holding your breath. Hold the breath, close your eyes, imagine the forest.
imagine, imagine you can see the drops falling from the flowers, the fog rising up slowly from the ground. If you feel that it's difficult, you could slowly open your eyes because there is another forest on the screen and you can picture yourself walking there. Are you still holding your breath? Who does still hold the breath? Okay, I can see most of you are still with closed eyes. You can open your eyes now. I'm pretty sure, and the research, our research tells us that the stuff that you just did now, it made you a little bit more comfortable holding your breath. It made you feel that the apnea is not as difficult and it made you feel a bit more relaxed. If we were to do it a couple of more times, I'm pretty sure you would score some very good uh, apnea results. Uh, but what we did just now, asked you to sit comfortably. There is a direct relationship between your body position and your stress levels. You might have felt it in your classrooms, but if your body position is not relaxed, usually your agitation level goes up, your stress levels go up. The second thing that we did just now was breathing. There is a direct relationship between the breathing and your stress levels, your metabolism. Did anybody hear of panic attacks? Panic attack, it usually it's uh, anxiety which strikes people out of nowhere. So I could be sitting here all comfortable, but then all of a sudden I would feel agitated and I would think, okay, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen, something will happen. It's a very complex mechanism, but there is one explanation for it. Your negative thought could trigger uh, increased breathing. So you would, unbeknown to you, you would start breathing quicker. If you start breathing quickly, your metabolism goes higher. Your heart rate starts to beat faster. If your heartbeat uh, becomes faster, your metabolism increases, which in turn brings even more stress. So one thing that doctors say if you are experiencing a panic attack is to just relax and breathe slowly. It's a great technique. And one more thing that we did just now, uh, well, it was concerned more with the brain per se, Maybe some of you have seen or have experienced how I started speaking a bit differently from the first part of the presentation. Before the second apnea, before your second breath hold, I started speaking with a bit lower tone. My pauses between the words became a bit longer. I started to use the words which would convey the message of security. I would try to make, I tried to make you feel relaxed. The technique, uh, well, it's called NLP, or it's somehow linked to hypnosis, but this mind part is where I, as the freediving instructor, is the, most, is the part that I'm most interested in. Because I believe that everything happens here in the brain. And for you to understand a bit more of the scientific part, there are a few examples I would like to bring. First of all, visualization. What you did now with your eyes closed is called visualization or mental imagery. You see, if our eyes are closed and if we imagine that we experience a certain activity, our body starts to feel that we are there experiencing this activity. So if you were, if you were to imagine how you're eating a hamburger, Pavlov's dogs, anybody? Do you remember? Uh, if you were to imagine a burger, your stomach would start to secrete more acid. Your saliva would start building up. Equally, if you were to imagine something very peaceful, a forest walk with your friend, and uh, you felt comfortable, and it's a, such a pleasurable activity, you didn't see your friend for a long time, everything in your mind though, you didn't see your friend, and he tells about his journeys, and you feel there in place, all of a sudden, your body will start to secrete uh, serotonin, the, you're, you're becoming more relaxed, you're becoming happy. You can try it in your normal daily life. 
If we were to see the real uh, power of visualization, for example, my dad was a psychologist and he did this crazy study when I was very little. They collected 60 students. So imagine there were three groups. Group, and before this experiment, we would measure, as the scientist, we would measure your body composition, your fat percentage, and your muscle mass. The study would run for two months. Over the course of two months, group A, they would have their normal diets, no gym, no any exercises, just their regular routinely life. Group B, you guys, you would all be going to the gym. Same food, but a proper gym with a fitness instructor. And group C, you would be the person who would eat standard food, you were not gonna go to the gym, but every day for 20 minutes, you would sit at home and visualize you being in the gym. Okay, I'm in the gym, I'm relaxed, uh, I'm starting doing the warm up, I put the t shirt on, I put the weights on a bench press, I start putting, pushing the bench press, the sweat drop is going on my forehead, I erased it, just that. After two months, group A had an increase in body fat, group B had a significant decrease, I think it was around 15% of uh, body fat and increase in muscle mass. Group C, the thinkers, the believers, they had a decrease in body fat and also increase in muscle mass. No gym. Thinking about the gym, it creates believing the gym, believing that you're in a gym, it creates uh, electrical activity along your muscles and the muscles start to actually work. There are lots of studies to support those hypotheses. Uh, there is a new field in psychology called uh, psychosomatic, psychosomatic medicine. And what psychosomatic medicine is all about is it looks at the physical conditions which come from your mental labyrinths. And right now it's proven that IBS or gastritis could be triggered by, by stress. I'm, I'm suggesting you to turn the stress into something else. Don't stress about your life. Imagine if you were to come home every day and just imagine that everything is fine. We will speak about it just for a minute uh, in a very little bit. Uh, those psychological studies that we always overlooked before, they are a door to a very big potential in the future. Just imagine if you were to use the visualization in your daily life. A test, uh, an ex important presentation, you are having trouble concentrating, you have a meeting with some guys that you don't like and they don't like you and you want to be calm. Or maybe you want to ask the girl out, the girl that you are always very uncomfortable with, you want to ask her out. Everything could be solved via creative visualizations. Well, today you've seen just a glimpse of the raw power of the brain. And everybody have this processor up here. We don't usually use it, but I think it holds uh, enormous power. Today you've seen how you, with just a bit of thinking, you managed to turn evolution a bit sideways. Oxygen consumption, oxygen utilization is our most important mechanism within, within the body. Stuff can go wrong, but this is the most important process. Today, you've seen how this process be changed. Here, in the mind, you didn't change your lungs, you didn't get more oxygen in the blood, but just with the power of the brain, you managed to slow down your evolutionary mechanism, which I think is very cool. So, well done to you. Uh, I believe that there is a lot of power in your brains, and I think it's the time that we start researching it more on our normal daily basis, not on behalf of the courses or coursework. You don't have to be a doctor to understand it, but if we were to use those techniques in our daily life, I believe our lives could be much, much, much better. And I strongly suggest that you start doing it whenever you feel like it. Well, thank you.